This is like how, um, like for example, I just, uh, for the repetition, I have made this slide again. So we have lots of label data. We have this model M, a machine learning model. And then we have a pretext task, which we have set. For example, as I showed, for example, image uh, rotation. And we use these like pseudo labels uh, generated from this pretext task and train this M again and again, like iteratively. And once this M, uh, like after, after a while, after a few iterations of epochs, this M is able to learn good features. So how, once we have like this, when, for, how, how could we evaluate such features? Like for, let's say we have some features or, or representation which is good enough, how, how could we evaluate? So one particular approach in evaluation is basically we could assess the quality of features uh, using uh, KK nearest neighbors actually. So this is one standard uh, way of doing, the, doing this. So here the idea is that using M, we compute and store the features of the training data for the downstream task. And then nearest neighbor classifier that matches the feature of an image to the K nearest stored uh, features that votes for the label. So essentially the idea is that you pass on all the training data through your uh, learned model, you get the features, and then basically you store these features. And then you pass on the test data or whatever the data you, you, are, you want to use for downstream application, you, you use the same model, extract out the features, and extract, and basically you simply apply k nearest neighbors and see, okay, if the if the model is able to print correctly or not for the for your particular application. So this is one way of uh, doing so. But in 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 in, in practice, um, there are also two other very uh, commonly used methods uh, which, which have been adopted to evaluate the performance of SSLs. And for example, for, for this, um, I will also introduce the downstream task. Where what 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 this means is, uh, we generally define some downstream tasks that are uh, in, that are they, for example, uh, for we want to uh, a particular downstream application could be a, a sub segmentation step or or an object detection from classification trained model. Let's say. So performance of the transfer learning on these high level vision tasks estimates the generalizability of the pre trained SSL model app. So this is like the whole idea. So this, what this means, graphically, this is like this. So basically, we, after the pretext training, we have a pre-trained M, this model, and we kind, we kind of do this knowledge transfer. So now we take some small amount of label data and basically use this M to extract out the features and then, after, and then append a shallow network, a very small shallow network, maybe a, a linear classifier, basically, and then for a particular downstream application. So here, for example, here there are two ways, two general strategies. Uh, one is called linear probing. One is called fine tuning. That that how could we update the weights when we do uh, when we use this label data for training? One is of uh, linear probing refers to fixing the parameters of the learned model M, like that. That which, which means that we kind of freeze the first encoder part, and train a linear classifier on top of the generated representations. This actually helps in measuring how linearly separable the pre-trained embeddings are learned by the, by the model M. And fine tuning basically refers to training a model on the downstream task by using parameters of the pre-trained model M for initialization. So basically here, M is initialized with the pre-trained model weights, but then the weights are also updated for the M, uh, for the M itself. In the, linear, uh, in the linear probing case, we fix this M and don't train it but in the downstream application task, in the fine, fine tuning task or evaluation strategy, we also update the model M weights along with the uh, linear embedding. Okay, so here I just wanted to show how this process, like uh, what kind of results do we get when we apply such kind of thing? For example, for example, in this image classifier, I showed you uh, for this image rotation case, setting an image rotation as a pretext task, if we somehow train a model and then see, we see performance of that model uh, compared it to uh, supervised learning models. For example, let's say here, here uh, the idea is like coming from this uh, from this paper, basically where they applied this they use LXNet architecture and uh, did this pre-training on this LXNet architecture, and then also compared it with uh, the completely training the LXNet art architecture with labels on the ImageNet uh, database. So on the, on the top row, basically this image net uh, uh, labels are the basically, uh, it's a supervised, in the, it is done in a supervised setting. 
So for example, if I, if, if I concentrate on conf5, basically, so like the, the, the results are shown for conf1, conf2, conf3, conf4, and conf5. This means basically all the subsequent layers after that are trained and till this layer, the, 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 uh, the weights kept, are kept frozen. For example, con5 means that all the preceding layers uh, weights are kept fixed, but the subsequent three um, uh, dense layers are, are updated, like the, their weights are updated. This is like the standard LXNet architecture. And here we see if we use the ImageNet weights to do the uh, ImageNet labels and completely use them to supervisedly train the, the LXNet model, we get an accuracy of around 50.5. And, but if we use like, and, and if, we, if we do random initialization of the, of the feature extraction and only update or only uh, train the last uh, linear layers, then we are able to uh, get an accuracy of 14.1. So this is like basically the random baseline. And with this rotnet, like for, for example, using this uh, ro image rotation as a pretext task, we are able to get, for example, if we see of this con5, we are able to get 36.5 uh, percent uh, accuracy so which is which is uh, you, you could see much better than the random baseline and approaching to the imp, to the supervised counterpart so which 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 shows quite which is quite promising actually and has actually this actually kind of sparked uh, the uh, the self-supervised uh, learning in the community